uh, no news yet from the police or the politicians, but I'm going to give them to the new year. And then I'm going to reach out and then I'm going to start. I will be starting my podcast in the new year. I just need to figure out the content and what I'm going to be talking about and bringing in different things and guests and doctors and everybody. And that takes time and energy, which I don't have, but I'm going to make do. Um, right now, <clears throat> I have two children under the age of four. My son's going to be four January 5th. My daughter's going to be two January 31st. So right now, I'm trying to figure out how to do everything. And right now, I'm pretty much doing it. Oh, Elsa. Oh, hold on, I have to get Elsa. 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 She put Elsa Hello. in. The... I'm Elsa of Aridale. So right now, Hello. the... I'm Elsa of I'm... There's no law when it comes to IVF. It's just desperate people that are willing to do anything the doctor says. There has to be some kind of legislation there to stop the corruption, to stop the abuses, to stop everything from happening. Right now, doctors get couples that are coming in with a donor and they're signing contracts with the agency. The agency is supposed to be protecting the donor. The donor is supposed to be deciding if she wants to do multiple couples, double couples, or just a solo cycle and she just wants to be very limited. <clears throat> the doctors are taking away the donor's rights in their contract to have one couple to help one couple each time they do a retrieval. Doctors are doing multiple couples. So donors are being abused. And there's no legislation, there's no nothing to help these women. God bless them for helping other women for whatever reason why they're becoming a donor, either to further their education and life and to pay bills or their home with children and to pay household bills, whatever the reason is. Thank you. Thank you for being a wonderful person. Thank you for thinking about women helping each other. See, this is what it's supposed to be all about. All about is helping each other. But whenever there's money involved, you know what happens. There's abuses. See, when donors come in to do the retrieval, they're being pushed to the limit. They're being lied to about how many eggs that are retrieved, how many are fertilized, who gets pregnant. There's children that are out there that the donor doesn't even know she has. See, some donors don't care. They don't want to know about it. It's easier that way. Some donors like to know how many children where she can be aware for her family. But that's all being taken away. Doctors are retrieving women for four to six couples each time they go in. And if your donor doesn't do well, and the couple who's paying is on the shit end of the stick. Oh, the cycle didn't go good. You didn't have enough eggs. You have to do another retrieval. The retrieval was done too early. See, that happened to me the first time with the first doctor. Yeah. Said that there was nothing. The, uh, the eggs uh, that were fertilized and all that, that uh, didn't happen and everything. And, you know. I had to do another cycle. I changed doctors. And this doctor was even worse because he had a nice smile. And he lied and he didn't do unnecessary tests because he didn't give a shit. You know, he made his money other places by infertile couples that were willing to pay him for eggs and embryos. He shared everything. See, I'm holding him accountable. He needs to be accountable. See, donor children, be it ovum, be it sperm donor, 
they need to know where they come from. God forbid something happens and you need to know the history on the family. See, there's a new thing that I just found out about where age, the clinics are selling multiple eggs from different women, fertilizing it in a batch. So you do not know the genetics of the woman. It's like eeny, meeny, miny, mo, And you don't know. But if something happens and the baby has a genetical disease that goes back maybe five, six generations, how are you going to do your investigation? How are you going to find out about the health of that family, the genetic background? You can't. It's, you're going to have to trace down every single woman that was in that batch if they even know who they took it from. And, you know, maybe the woman was aware of it. Maybe she wasn't. And you're going to have to trace down everybody in that clinic. You're going to have to start a lawsuit on the clinic to get that information. Or you're going to have to let your child die not knowing his genetical history. See, you need to know. And see, this is a crime. And I understand people want children, but it shouldn't be at any cost. The cost of knowing the genetic background. You need to. Playing Russian roulette with a baby is not okay. So right now, lawmakers need to come into it. And the money factor has to go out. Because this is where the doctors are. Because it's a big business because of infertile couples willing to pay anything. See, I used a sperm donor for my son. And I'm having a difficult time getting the information because my son is not speaking and he's just learning like single words double words trying to put it together and right now we do have a therapy appointment today for speech and we will be trying to figure out what's going on with him see i may have to bring a lawsuit against the company and get a court order and get that information. See, nothing should be where you cannot get it when it concerns a child and the well-being of a child. And when you're dealing with ovum <laughs> and you're dealing with four or five different women, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's crazy. You do not know. You just want a baby. But what happens if the baby is sick? What happens if the baby's born with cancer? What happens if there's something wrong with the kidneys, the liver? You know, it's too late. You should have thought about this before you conceived. Parental separation is a biggie. How do you know that the, the ovum was obtained legally? See, you need to know that because you need to have parental separation done even with ovum. And once it's fertilized, you need a lawyer to give your embryos to another couple. See, you need to know. So right now, lawmakers have to get off their asses and do something. Because right now, everybody needs to be aware of what's happening. This silent crime needs to see light. And these couples should be helped by the government not by private clinics obtaining ovum or embryos illegally. It needs to be brought up by the government where the government could have a database in place for these children to have a set price 
how much air the, the treatment is going to be cost or if it's covered by your insurance or if it's covered under the government or it's covered by you the government needs to be involved to bring the pricing down number one to make it affordable for everybody and not to bankrupt these people and right now genetics is a biggie so right now we all need to stand together you know this is a touchy subject for a lot of people when they can't have a baby and choosing a donor is a big deal because you need to know everything what you're doing it's not only characteristics it's psychiatric it's the, the well-being the health family members going back six seven generations you need to know or you're gonna have a surprise when you have a schizophrenic child that you don't know where it came from you need to know all these little things that pop up see it's nice to have a baby but the baby grows up and the baby has issues and you need to take care of it see everybody needs to know couples that go in to have ivf never sign up to be a donor things need to be in place see these doctors need to be told that this is is not legal see right now ivf is like swiss cheese there's no legislation on it only if the doctor hurts you so right now once your retrieval is done it's considered property and they're stealing your property just like what happened to me my property was stolen right now another woman has my child dna testing will be done see i am making my life very public and I started a, a lawsuit in the court. I withdrew it because of the DNA. But their lawyers are wanting me to sign away my rights to go after him again. And I'm not doing it. You want to take me to court? Let's go. We'll put it in the media. See, I don't care. See, at this point, I want everybody involved. I want DNA testing. See, right now, it cost me around $100,000 to get pregnant for my both of my kids when I did the IVF. For my son, Zane, was a double cycle. For my daughter, her embryos couldn't even be graded. I got pregnant. And I started my... Once I got pregnant for my daughter, Olivia, the doctor was relieved. But I don't know how I feel about having a full genetic sibling out there. When I was eight months, I filed a complaint. And they sent me a letter back saying they can't help me. I contested it. They can't help me. Why? Because he didn't hurt me during the procedure. See, my property is not protected under the law. And that's why everybody needs to know. When you have embryos in storage in a clinic, they have no accountability to you. It's a property, like a dog, a cat. At least if you have your animal uh, microchip, you can get it back. And you can get your car back because it has a registration. Serial numbers. What does your embryo have? <laughs> DNA. You need to do DNA testing. See, that's why I say we need a database for donor children. To know where the genetic material comes from. To know where to go if we have a problem. So right now... Everybody needs to be aware of what's happening. All these couples who are buying eggs and embryos, you need to know what you're doing is wrong. Not only is it wrong, morally it's wrong, and nobody cares. See, that's why our society is in a shithole. That's why we're in a pandemic, because we never learn our lessons. 
We never, we don't care. We just want what we want. You know the saying, more wants more? Olivia, no. And right now, try and do the right thing. Try and do it the right way. You know, try not to hurt anybody along the way. See, this couple, I met them in November of 2018. And the doctor told her she had, he had to take away one of the embryos to give it to me. I didn't get pregnant. She didn't get pregnant. I only had three embryos left. Two were gone. In December of 2018, he prepared two women for one embryo. Are you going to cut it in half? Like it says in the Bible, two mothers are saying that this is my baby. What are you going to do? Are you going to cut the baby in half? Only a true mother is going to say, let my child live. The person who stole child. it doesn't care. It's my child and I want it. Uh. A true mother would not let her child die. So you know what? It's up to you on what kind of person you want to be. But that child will grow up and we'll find out. Because a lot of people are interested in ancestry right now. And it's so cheap to get a DNA test. Uh, you know, 23andMe, Ancestry DNA. There's so many companies that you can go. And when the, when the DNA comes back, how are you going to answer that child? When they're being linked up to their genetic families, how are you going to tell them? When you lie to them their whole lives. No. See, this can happen any time. How would you feel if your son or your daughter goes to school with their half-siblings, or full genetic siblings, and hook up? No. How will you feel? And how will you tell them, I'm sorry. I never thought that this could happen. How are you going to explain to them? You see, most people are not thinking right now. You just want a baby at any cost. You, that's why law needs to be put in place to protect everybody involved. But most of all, over everything, you need to protect the child where this cannot happen. And right now, that's what I'm fighting for. Because I have a full genetic sibling out there that is in close proximity to me. See, our districts are just like one district away. And if you know anything, children meet on the computer. Children meet through social groups. Things happen. What are you going to say when brother and sister hook up? I'm sorry. I stole your embryos and I'm sorry that this is happening. No. You are you need to be exposed right now. And this is what I'm doing. See, everything needs to come out. And I don't care how it comes out. See, just getting it into the legal system cost me $10,000. And it would have cost me a lot more if I didn't put the brakes on it right now. See, lawyers need to study, they need to do things, and the lawyers are charging you for them learning. This one lawyer I had wanted to charge me $4,000 for the first meeting that he was gonna take the case while I had to study. I'm not paying you $4,000 to learn. You should do this on your own time. I gave him two thousand dollars, then fifteen hundred, then fifteen hundred. You know, it adds up when you're in the thousands. I don't know about you, but I don't have endless pockets. And right now, I put the the halt. I had some good lawyers that say, "No, I can't take this case." You know, I don't have the resources. Neither does my firm. I'm sorry. 
just walk away. I had looked at one lawyer that took a couple hundred dollars from me and said, nah, we'll sue. And then they got scared when they, they learned the truth, how difficult this would be. Because there's no law. See, then I went to this other lawyer. He took $2,000 from me. And then he wanted another 400 And when he brought me into the office to tell me he was quitting the case and then wanted another $400 from me. Listen, it's money. And everybody takes it from you. This one lawyer told me I needed a family lawyer. I hired a family lawyer. She wanted $5,000. And she dropped the case and charged me $2,800 to tell me that I need DNA. Bring me the DNA and I can do it for you. But I told you that's why I'm hiring you. See, they take your money. And it's legal. See, certain lawyers have a conscience. Certain lawyers don't. And right now, to get justice is money. See, I started to go fund me for the legal fees and everything because I know it's going to be well over $100,000. And right now, I'm funding it myself. And when I started going on Facebook and the GoFundMe, I did a mass friend. My daughter found out about it. She was upset. I stopped the GoFundMe. I stopped uh, that, that was Facebook. And then I went back on Facebook. And then that's another story. But see right now, it needs to come out because I need to protect my children. So just be careful. Like I'm saying, make sure you have parental separation or you're going to be in a world of hurt. So I'll get back to you with a, another video, but I'm going to end it right now because my Gary's coming up to walk the dogs and then I'm going to get Zane up. So God bless you and I hope that God will be good to you. And I hope that you're not going to be in a world of hurt when all this comes in, you know, out. You know. Anyways, God bless and I'll be sending another video out soon. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button where we can reach more people. Thank you.